So nested if in the sense you should understand if inside the if you should understand what if inside the if is what I will call it as a nested if PLR SCR in the sense it's a clear screen. So it'll erase a previous output. So all those things. If I want to read any value from the user, I have to use scanf. Hello everybody, I welcome all of you to the next session on control structure. This is a very important uh, practical session is what I would like to tell all of you. So fine, uh, what is that I'm going to demonstrate in the previous session, I have shown you what exactly if statement, simple if statement is doing and what exactly if else is doing. So hope you understood the basic concepts there. Now I will show you how exactly nested if is working. So nested if in the sense you should understand if inside the if you should understand what if inside the if is what I will call it as a nested if. So fine, let's understand this. What exactly we are trying to do here. So you all know that I don't have to speak about the header files. So I don't have to speak again with respect to the void men. I have spent enough time with you in the previous program. So let me get into the concept directly. So I have the variable, all right? So what is that I have? So I have the variable called A. So what is the variable that I have here? I have the variable A, all right? So that variable, this variable is of type int. A is a variable of type int, is what you need to remember. So fine, we understood that A is a variable of type int. So after that, I'm using CLR ACR. Why should I have CLR ACR? So we should have the clear screen. So of whatever the previous output that I have, I have to clear it. So I have shown you that in my previous session. So fine. So to clear the previous output, I will be having the CLR SCR. So you know that after that. So please observe what I have here. So I have print F enter the number is what I have given here. Print F enter the number is what I have given here. So fine. So I have a scan F. So you all know that if I want to read any value from the user, I have to use scan F. What is the function that you will use? You have to use scan F. So please understand this. So in this scan F, I have given percentage D within the brackets. Is it within the brackets? I have given here the brackets I have. So again, I have the coach here. Within the coach, I have given the percentage D comma ampersand a what is the meaning of it the meaning of this is i am entering one integer value i am entering one integer value that value should be stored in this variable that is a what is this ampersand sir you are saying the address of the a where exactly it should store so that's what the meaning of this suppose if i take two values if i read two values how do you give so you will have two amp two percentage d percentage d percentage d here you will have ampersand a again you will have one more variable that is comma ampersand b so like that you will have two variables i will be able to read two values so that's how i will be reading the values so uh, fine you understood how to read the values now it's time to understand nested if statements nested in the sense if inside the if is what you need to remember. So I have if a is greater than zero. What is that I have? If a is greater than zero. So if a is greater than zero, open the flower bracket. Inside that, again, I have one more if statement. So nested in the sense if statement inside the if statement. That is what I will call it as a nested if. So what is the condition again here? I have a should be greater than five. So if this condition is true, I will print greater than five. Else, lesser than five. So this is what you need to understand. So for each if, so you will have, all right? So you will have else block. So you'll have else block. So inside this, again, I have if and else. That's what you need to remember here. Inside if, again, I have if and else. All right, so let me show you this. So please observe, I have else block also. These else block, whatever I have here for the main if. For this if, I have this else block. Suppose if I don't have, if whatever the number that I have entered is not greater than zero. So it will say entered number is less than zero. So fine, I have entered some number that is greater than zero. All right, so if this condition is true, again, it will check one more time. It should be greater than five again. 
All right, if this condition is true, it will execute this. So it will skip this and this. You got my point? Suppose if this condition is true, it will execute this. It will skip this and this. Suppose if this condition is true, but this condition is false, at that time it will execute this. It will skip this and this. So let's try and understand all the possibilities now. So let me start. So let me start executing this program now. So please observe the different outputs that I will get. How exactly each uh, combination or how exactly it is working. Let me show you. All right, Alt plus F9. So it is giving me zero errors. So right. So let me just run this program. So I have to enter the number. So let me start with a minus one. All right. So I will enter minus one. Okay. My input is minus one. So I will press enter after entering minus one. What is that I'm pressing minus one press enter. So fine. So entered number is less than zero. I'm only getting this. The rest two statements are skipped. Please observe this. So greater than five is skipping. Okay. And then less than five it is skipped. Okay. Only this statement is executed. Why? Because I have entered minus one. It is checking the condition here. Is it greater than zero? No, my, my value was minus one. So it is less than zero. It is less than zero. So what happens? So it will skip everything. So it will execute the false block. It will execute the false block. So fine. Let me show you one more thing now. Okay, now I'll uh, run one more time. You just please observe uh, what is that I have to do. So I'll enter, uh, I'll run this program. Let me just enter four. So what will happen when I enter four? So what is the output? Less than five. What exactly it is doing? I have entered four and it is giving me less than five. Please observe the output. So it is checking. I have entered four. My A value is four right now. It is greater than zero. This condition is true. So if this condition is true, so it is coming inside. Again, it is checking this condition. I have entered four. A value is greater than five here. That is a condition, but A value is four. What I have entered. So the condition fails here. If this condition fails, so it is executing this. That is less than five. It is skipping this and this. That's all you need to remember. So fine. Let me show you one more time. So I have, let me run and uh, show you. Suppose if my enter value is seven, all right? So what it should show me, it should show me greater than five, all right? So it is greater than five. That's the output that you need to remember. So this is how the nested if is working for all of you, all right? So let me show you the different, one more different type of if statement that we have. So what I have here, so in this, program so you need to observe one thing so i think i have discussed already so what is the header files is all about i don't have to speak much about again all right again you all know that so the program execution starts from the main function that's what you need to remember here again i have taken a variable uh, that's a, a of type int so that's what you need to remember and then i have clr scr so clr scr in the sense what? CLR, SCR in the sense, it's a clear screen. So it'll erase the previous output. So all those things, you all know that. So I have the print statement here. So I have given enter uh, your choice. I have uh, just typed, no, I've done the mistake, no, grammar mistake I have done. All right, let me just change it. Enter the choice is what I've uh, given. So enter your choice is what I have to give. All right, let me change that. Change it to enter your choice. Okay, here we go. Enter your choice is what I've given here. And then, so user will enter some value. So I'm trying to store that in a variable A. So I think I spoke about the scanf in the previous program. So let me not do that again. So fine, what is that I'm doing here? First, I'm checking if A is equal to is equal to 10. So I should print it is equal to 10. Suppose I have to check one more thing. So I have more than one condition, okay? That's what you need to observe here. Suppose I have, if A is greater than 10, okay? So then you have to print greater than 10. Else, you have to print invalid entry. Else, you have to print invalid entry. How many conditions you are checking here? I have two conditions. One is A is equal to is equal to 10. Another one is A is greater than 10. In all my previous program, I had only one condition, right? So now, I have two conditions. That's what you need to remember here. So how many else if I can have? You can have n number of else if. But, so please remember, all this if statement and else if is a true block. Either one of the statement will be executed. But, so for all this true block, I will have only one else block. I will have only one else block. That is what you should remember here. So let's start and let's understand how exactly this program is working. Say for example, what, what should I enter now? So let me just compile it first. So Alt plus F9, so please enter. 
and control plus F9. So fine, enter your choice. So I have to enter the value for A. That's the thing that I have to give. So I had just given enter your choice. So fine. Let me enter 12. All right. My value whatever entered is 12. What should be the output? So it is greater than 10. What is the output that I have? It is greater than 10. So fine. So what statement, which statement is working? So I have entered 12. So first it is checking this A is greater than 10. So it is not true. So it is skipping this. Again, it is checking the next condition. So A is greater than 10. Yes, it is true. So it is executing this. So then after that, it is skipping this and it, it is coming out of the program. So that's all you need to remember. So now let's understand one more. Let me run this program one more time. So control F9. So what is that I have? So let me enter four. Okay, I have entered four. So invalid entry. So why it is showing me in, uh, invalid entry? So let's check that. So I have entered four. So it is checking the first condition. Is it equal to equal to 10? No, it is not. Again, it is checking the second condition. It is greater than 10. No, it is not. So I have entered four. So that's why it is printing invalid entry. That's why it is printing invalid entry. That's what you need to remember. That's why it is printing invalid entry. That's what you need to remember. So fine. So let's check one more time. So what is that? I have to give n no equal to 10. All right. Let's check that also. So control F. Okay. My input is 10. Now please check what is that I have. So it is equal to 10. So if I just press enter, it will come out of the program. So that's what you need to remember, my dear students. This is how the ladder is working for all of you. So guys, I think I have explained all the different types of if statements by executing it, all right? So please watch this video again and again until you understand this and then you practice by yourself. By saying this, let me wind up the session. Thank you very much, one and all for watching me.